Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I've got three re slits. Where are they? They're over here. I might as well bring them over into the picture. Um, and have I got three different countries? I do have three different countries. Uh, I've got Alsace in France. I've got whereabouts in Austria is this? Niederösterreich. Don't know whereabouts in uh, Lower Austria. And the last one is the Barossa in South Australia. Uh, which order shall I do them first? I think I'll do the Austrian one first. So this is a Landhaus Meyer Riesling 2013, weighing in at 12% alcohol. Let's just give this one a try. Clean, brisk, mountain stream, lime and lemon, a little bit of herb in there. It smells fresh and stony. Uh, it's one of those that it's going to be quite light in body, but it feels like it's going to have quite a lot of flavour. And there's a little bit of um, lime jelly in there. But um, overall, it's just this juicy, quite mouth-filling um, flavours with that tang of... Um, uh, that, that Riesling should always have to keep it all fresh and uh, uh, and sprightly. And um, I rather like that. I'm going to have another sip. Mm, good. Good stuff. One of those that um, it, it sort of builds in the mouth and uh, makes it keeps you coming back for more and think and make you, makes you think as well. I want something. Um, I'd like some. Uh, I'd like some prawns with that. I'd like to, I'd something because it's got quite a lot of flavour, but it's got all this acidity. To, it would need to be quite a fatty fish dish. Um, smoked salmon. Yeah, smoked salmon would be rather nice. Uh, next one. Ooh, maybe I should have done this one first. This is Jacobs Creek Steingarten uh, from the Barossa 2011. 10.8% um, alcohol. Very precise. Let's have a go at this little baby. And um, so it, it, what is it? It was the first one, 2013. Yeah, so this is two and a half years older, and that's one of the characteristics that, that, that really comes through. It's that um, um, slightly developed, it's got a, a little bit honeyed, a little bit toasty, uh, and yes, there is the, the fresh citrus fruit there, uh, a little bit of herbal zing too, but um, overall a more mature, um, and um, it, yeah, it's, it's strange, it's that lighter and, and alcohol, but uh, the maturity is giving this uh, rounder uh, profile. There's less of the in-your-face fruit. First one wasn't really in-your-face, but uh, here it seems to be more about a stoniness and um, mineral tension, uh, whereas the previous one had a bit, a bit more weight of fruit. Uh, here there's like this seam of acidity running through it all, and uh, flavours are hanging nicely on that. Cl not quite, not clinging on for dear life, but almost feels like a wine you can twang like a harp. Uh, very precise, very tasty as it is. Uh, but I think it's, uh, well, like a lot of recent, it's, it's going to, uh, uh, it's, it's built to last. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is still going strong in 10, 15 years time, but very nice now. Final one. Uh, oh, I like half bottles. Um, this is uh, Hugel. Uh, back to 2000 and, um, well, they're not back to 2012. We haven't done 2012 yet. Uh, this is uh, uh, Hugo Riesling. Uh, they, they do a range called Jubilee, which I think is the range above here. This is just basic bog standard. Uh, not that they ever make anything bog standard at Hugo, but um, yeah, Hugo Riesling. Give it a whirl. I'll just see, have a look at the alcohol. Back to 12%. I mean, this is, people talk about, uh, uh, oh, complain about high, high alcohol levels. If you're going to complain about high alcohol levels, Go for some Riesling, because uh, there's not all that many of those that uh, uh, top 13%. Uh, some of the heavier, uh, weightier, maybe uh, southern Germany, and some of the Rheingau, some of the Austrian ones might get it up there to 13 and a half, uh, maybe even 14% at times. Certainly Central Otago in New Zealand does it as well, but 12% uh, um, here. And this is much more in that, what I call the sweet and sour style. Uh, so there's a sweetness of um, slightly uh, crystallised fruit rather than fresh citrus fruit. So crystallised oranges. Uh, but then there's this sour edge of, um, of acidity. And there's also, ooh, now how would I describe it? Something like quince, uh, something that's like a, a, a almost maybe even rhubarb, something that's giving that little bit of sourness as well as the tartness. Uh, and um, it smells. It smells good. It's maybe it smells like it's got different layers, not not better layers than the uh, the first two. The first two are very uh, precise and fine. This one feels a little bit more um, baroque, for want of a better term. It's probably the fleshiest of these three. Um, but as with the previous two, it's got this seam of um, fresh acidity running through it. There's an earthiness as well. Maybe this is um, if the um, if the, the Steingarten was uh, had that stoniness, Stone Garden. Um, here, there's an earthiness about it. So different different types of uh, of soil character coming through. 
I like all three of them, um, I, and it's a really nice trio of wines and uh, spoilt for choice uh, for what to drink tonight. But um, I think maybe this little half bottle is it's all like because it's so sweet and it's so small and it's just saying Simon, drink me. So maybe that's the one that uh, I will head for first. See you soon.